Hey guys, my name is Annie. Welcome to my channel, Eat, Drink, and Be Reading. And today I'm going to talk my March TBR. Well guys, it is March and as many of you know, in the booktube world, this means it is middle grade March. This is put on every year for the past few years by Katie at Life Between Words and Krista at Books and Jams. I've participated a little bit in past years before I was on booktube, mostly just taking the opportunity to read a middle grade novel, which I love middle grade, so that's never been an issue. <laughs> Always love the excuse. Um, this year I'm going to read a few more than I normally would. I'm not necessarily following the like uh, prompts that they give or the I don't know what the word is. Uh, anyway, I'm not necessarily trying to do all of the yeah prompts, um, but although I think a few of these fit some of them, um, this is just a year where I'm reading what I want to read. And I think without, usually I like to push myself in my reading, um, but this year, <laughs> I don't know that that's the case and that's okay. Um, giving myself lots of grace, especially with my reading, which I love so much that it's something that brings me joy and makes me feel normal and at a time in my life where normal matters, then that's what I'm going to do. So, um, we'll jump right in. Most of what I'm going to show is middle grade, but there's a couple others that I'm throwing in here as well. So let's go. Number one is The Van de Beekers of 141st Street by Karina Ian Glazer. Um, I have heard such great things about The Van der Beekers. I've wanted to read it for a while. I wasn't originally going to let me pick this one up, but when my kids and I were in a bookstore, it was finally open when my independent bookstore uh, buying a birthday gift for one of their friends. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick up a middle grade while I'm in here. And as soon as I started looking, my youngest had to go to the bathroom. I saw this one out in the front, just grabbed it and left just because I wanted to pick up some middle grade while I was there. This is about um, some siblings, the Vanderbeekers. Uh, their home in Harlem, it, their landlord is not renewing their lease and they really want him to. So it's about them trying to convince their landlord to, yeah, let them stay. Uh, it's supposed to be, it here says, delightful and heartwarming. And I think that that's my understanding is that's what it is. That kind of sounds perfect. So, the Vanderbakers. The second one I want to do this month is The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. I do technically own this book. I have a friend who was buying books from like Target online or something and they were having a buy two books get one free deal and since I am her reader friend she asked me if there are any books that I wanted and I said the war that saved my life and uh, she was funny she was like is that it says it's a child's book <laughs> I'm like it's middle grade and yes it is for me um but I haven't had a chance to go get it from her yet but I will get it for March um, The War That Saved My Life is about Ada, who is 10, and her brother Jamie. They are in London in the middle of World War II, and as the, they knew the bombings were going to happen, a lot of children were, um, like, sent out of London to try and save their lives, um, Ada and Jamie being one of them. Actually, I think that maybe Jamie was the only one, and Ada snuck out with him, A.B. Ugh. Ada has a twisted foot is what the back of the book says and um, clubbed foot I think and her mom has always treated her really terribly because of this so she uses this as an opportunity to get away they get placed with Susan who does not want to have children placed with her um, and I think it's a story of found family which I do really enjoy I also love historical fiction so I think this is going to be right up my alley and I have only heard wonderful, amazing things. It's like a booktube darling, and so I'm really excited to get to it. All right, the third book is The Green Glass House by Kate Milford. I'm actually going to listen to this book on audio. Um, it is, I think, kind of like a mystery a little bit. It's about Milo, who's 12. He is the 
uh, innkeeper's adopted son. Green Glass House is an inn. Um, and around, I think around Christmas time, um, a bunch of guests, these odd guests, keep showing up to the house and Milo discovers that it has something to do with the house itself. And so Milo and Medi, the cook's daughter, are trying to figure it out. It sounds fun and entertaining and sweet um, and a little bit different maybe than the other books. And so I'm really excited to include that one as well. Last but not least is The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gimmenhart. Gimmenhart. Um, I may or may not get to this one, and I, it is possible that I pick this up and then I put it down. I've heard great things about it. It is the story of Coyote Sunrise and her dad, who have spent the last five years living on a school bus going across the nation. They started doing this after her mom and her sisters were killed in a car accident. Um, and Coyote has decided she wants to go back home and is trying to kind of like trick her dad into driving them back across the country to their home. I can't decide if this is going to be just really wonderful for me right now or if the fact that she's lost her mom and her daughters is just going to be a little too much, or not her daughters, her mom and her sisters, um, for me having lost my husband and my, my daughters of losing their dad. It's up for debate. I want to read it at some point, so if I have time, I'll give it a shot. It is possible, though, that I end up putting it down. Okay, that is it for middle grade. Um, hopefully, I will finish this other book because it's due. It'll be due at the library, and that is Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings. I'm over halfway right now. It is massive, you guys. I am a little bit angry about how big it is. I don't care how good your writing is or what, like how much of this story you have in your head. This is unnecessary. No book needs to be this long. It is 45 hours on audio. My next door neighbors gave the, like sent me the Audible audiobook because I had mentioned them a long time ago when I saw all the, their Brandon Sanderson books in their uh, house that I had been curious about. I hadn't read any fantasy, didn't know where to start. Um, and so they sent this to me back in the fall, finally started listening to it at the beginning of February, and it is taking me <laughs> just so long, because it is so long. I finally, I realized it was going to take me months to get through on audio, and so I borrowed the actual book from the library so I could both read it with my eyes and my ears. Um, I'm going to take a little break to read some middle grade, um, and then hopefully come back to it and finish this. Um, this is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series by Brandon Sanderson. I, I don't even know how to describe it. There's so many different storylines that I'm, I know are all connected at some point, but they're just not there yet, um, that I wouldn't even begin to know how to describe this book in any, like, succinct way. But it is fantasy, and it's actually very entertaining and gripping, and I, like, want to keep reading it but I'm a little afraid I'm going to get to the end, want to read what happens next, because there's, it's, you know, it's the first of, I think, four, and then just not have the energy to pick up another one, because I could have read, like, two and a half decently long books in the time it has taken me to read this one. So Brandon Sanderson better show up big for the last 40%. And last but not least um, is Prayer in the Night by Tish Harrison Warren. This is a Christian nonfiction. It is based around the nighttime prayer of Compline, which is, I think, like a book of common prayer or prayer used in many liturgical traditions. I am not of a liturgical tradition, but I really appreciate them and like them a lot. And I've read a book by Tish Harrison Warren before, Liturgy of the Ordinary. It's one of my favorites. This is um, for those who work or watch or weep. Um, I've been reading like a chapter a night in um, different books that kind of discuss loss and grief and Jesus. And so this is the next one I'm going to pick up. Um, and I think I'm really going to appreciate it. Uh, Tish is just a beautiful writer. Um, she makes walking with Jesus, very practical and tangible, and I really appreciate that. 
So that's it. Those are the books, you guys, mostly middle grade, trying to finish this dang fantasy that's so long. And then um, something to remind me of Jesus in the midst of my grief. So that's it. What are you guys reading? Are you participating in middle grade March? Let me know in the comments below. Let's build community. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll talk later. Bye y'all.